everybody, Pastor Stan here again, ready to answer some yet more questions. Yes, you'd be surprised. I get all kinds of questions all the time about all manner of things, and I'm sort of like the explainer in chief of uh, the church. That's my job. I explain. I minister, but I also explain things. Thanks be to God for his gift in this area. So today we're going to look at the question, why is the church declining here in America? Why is the church declining here in America? And as always, if you receive a blessing for this time together, make sure you like and subscribe. I'm ready. Got my coffee. Got to have that. And I hope you have a beverage as well. So let's get started. Why is the church declining here in the United States? Yeah, good question, of course, because, you know, the church is supposed to be growing. The church is not formed way back. You know, the Fellowship of Believers is not formed to die. Why, why is it declining here? Whereas overseas, in Africa, for example, at least in, in, in the denomination I am ministering in, we've lost about 4.5 4 million in 50 years. The church in Africa, grown by 4.5 million. What in the world? What in the world's going on? Hey, I think we better find out what those Africans are doing and start doing it if we want our churches here, our believers, to grow as well in number. So that's what we're going to look at. Why is the church declining? Well, I think it's a very easy question to answer. Now, anytime this conversation comes up, whether it be a Bible study class or down at the restaurant or wherever, I always hear the same type of excuses. Excuse, excuse. Here's what I hear. Number one, everyone's favorite, it seems. This always comes up. Oh, they took prayer out of school. And, and I'm thinking, yes, but church is declining. Church is not school. They took prayer out of school. Secularization of society. Everything's becoming so secular. Christmas is so commercialized. And on and on and on. Yes, but that's not the church. That's secular society, which is always going to be that. Television, people, they stay home and they watch Wheel of Fortune instead of go to Bible study in the evening or whatever it might be. They watch football on Sunday morning. Possibly they do. Sure. Okay. So, but that's a person's choice. They decide to do that. And then you have sports on Sunday. You've got a uh, travel ball. You get this, you got that. Uh, excuse, excuse, excuse. But here's the thing. The church is not supposed to decline. The fellowship of believers is supposed to grow and grow and grow. So why is the church in Africa growing at the same rate churches in America are declining? Well, I believe I know the answer. Let's look at it. Revelation chapter 2. No, not Revelation. Yes, Revelation chapter 2. Let's look at it. Revelation chapter 2. The Lord Jesus dictating a letter to John, who's going to write these words down. He wrote the Revelation. It's the last book in our New Testament, talking about things that are, things that are to come. So here's what he says in real time. Jesus dictates this letter. This is me. Write this letter to the church in Ephesus. Here's what Jesus says. I know all the things you do. Wait a minute. Jesus knows all the things we do, me and you. That's what he says. I know all the things you do. I have seen your hard work and your patient endurance. I know you don't tolerate evil people. You have examined the claims of those who say they are apostles, but are not. You have discovered they are liars. You have patiently suffered for me without quitting. But I have this complaint against you, says Jesus. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. Look how far you have fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. If you don't repent, I will come and close your church. Whoa, that's some serious stuff right there. You don't hear that every Sunday in church, do you? No. He said, you don't love me anymore. Don't love me. Don't love each other. That's why you're fussing and fighting all the time. Can't get anything done. Who wants to come to your church? Who wants? I asked this question, by the way of churches when I do revivals or teaching or other things. Why would someone call, want to come to your fellowship? What, why would they want to come? What is here for them? How are they going to be greeted when they come in? Are they going to be uh, brought into the congregation? Are they going to be welcomed? 
Are they going to be embraced for the giftedness that they have? Or are they ready to pray with you to accept Jesus as your Savior? Or is it just a social club members only? Well, a lot of that out there, isn't there? Social club members only. So that's the challenge. A lot of excuses why the church is not growing. But no one in a declining church wants to say, oh, you know, I think it's because we don't love Jesus anymore. But he is the savior of the world, right? Yeah, well, we, we don't want to say that. Uh, but he is the Lord. He is the coming king. Yeah, well, what we want to do is have a covered dish or we want to have some food. <laughs> okay, well, there's a problem with that, obviously. Yeah, so that's not building the church. That's not growing the church. And that is not putting Jesus first. And if I don't put Jesus first in my personal life and in the life of the church or the fellowship, we will not and I will not prosper. You know why that is? Because one cannot disobey God to his face and expect to be blessed and prosper. And here's what Jesus said. He said, go into all the world, Matthew 28, Go into all the world and make disciples of all the nations. Go into all the world and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teach these new disciples everything I have taught you. So I read the scripture, I see what Jesus teaches, then I teach others who are being saved or who have become saved by God's grace. Well, what if I refuse to do that? What if I know that Jesus commands me, commands our church, our fellowship to do this, but we just say, well, we're, we don't do that. We don't do that at our church. You know, we, we do other things. Do you think my church is going to be blessed? Do you think I'm going to be blessed? Not blessed. I cannot flaunt in the Father in heaven's face his commandment. We're not doing it. We're not doing it. That's why churches decline. In in they're in disobedience against God. God's commandment is clear. If I do it, I will be blessed. Yay! I'll be blessed. And so will the church grow and prosper. And the Lord will send people to be a part of that fellowship who are of like mind. That's how the church grows. We don't have to have a big light show, a big band. Although I'd like to have a light show sometime. But still, it's not all of that. It's not all the secular. It's not all that those kind of things to draw people in the church. It's us going out into the church. Like Jesus said, go into the world and make disciples. If I put Jesus first, if I obey God, we will prosper and the church will cease to decline. So if you look around at all these churches that are declining, what's happening? Just like Jesus said, if you don't repent, I will come and close your church. A lot of churches ought to just put a big sign up over the pulpit and say, here's the reason we're declining. Now get back out there and start obeying the Lord. And that's why churches are declining. It's good, good to be with you again, my friends. I hope you have a good solid week and that the Lord blesses you in all that you do as you obey the Lord. Well, see you next week or whenever you tune in again. And uh, as always, if you appreciate this time together, like and subscribe. All right. See you till next time. Mm -hmm.